Hi everybody. Well, today we have come to the sixth word in our Words of Hope series. And today I am handing over to Tabitha, who's going to lead us through today's children's session. So over to you, Tabitha. Enjoy! Hi everyone! As Victoria said, we're on the sixth week of our Words of Hope series here at CBC. And today's word that we're going to be exploring is the spirit. And this is a really big topic to explore, so I think I'm going to have to go and get my friend Steph to help me. I'm about to make a fruit salad if you'd like to help me. Well, actually, I was hoping you could help me with something. Oh, really? What is it? Well, I'll tell you what. Come and sit down with me and then I'll tell you. Okay. So, Steph, today we're going to be learning about the Holy Spirit. The what? No, who? The what? No, who? The what? Who? That's the first important thing we have to learn about the Holy Spirit, is that he's a who and not a what. Okay, so if he's a who, that means that he is someone that I could get to know. Absolutely. So, so often we think of the Holy Spirit as this force that we discuss in church sometimes. But actually, just like you've got God the Father and God the Son, you've also got God the Holy Spirit, who's just as much a person as the other two. That is really cool. Where can I find this Holy Spirit? Actually, don't tell me. I know who will be able to help me. Ian Crosley will definitely have a map. I'll just go and call him. No, no, no. Steph, Steph, come back. Sit down. I think you've got the wrong end of the stick. I have. You see, you won't be able to find the Holy Spirit on a map. You see, like earlier on when I was running around looking for you in all of the wrong places, if you're looking on a map, you're looking in the wrong place. Just like you were inside the whole time, the Holy Spirit's actually inside of us. Oh, okay. So has the Holy Spirit always been inside of us? No. Let me explain. Even though the Holy Spirit only came upon Christians in the New Testament and is mostly mentioned in the New Testament, if we look really carefully, we can see that the Holy Spirit was actually mentioned right from the very beginning of the Bible. In Genesis chapter 1, before the earth was even created, it talks about the Spirit of God hovering over the waters. In the story of Moses and the Israelites in the desert, the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire that guided them was God's Spirit. In the tabernacle and in the temple, it was God's spirit that enabled them to be present with him. It was then, in the New Testament, once Jesus had died, rose again and gone back to be with God in heaven, that the Holy Spirit came on all Christians so that they too could experience God being with them. Dear God, oh, dear Father God, oh, oh Steph, what's going on? Oh, Tabs. I'm just trying to pray, but I don't know what to say, and I can't get my words out, and it's all a jumble in my head, and... That's I... okay. It is? Yeah, the Holy Spirit is interceding for you. Into what? Interceding. Interceding? What does that mean? I know, it's a very big word, but why don't I use that conversation with my mum at the start of the week to explain? Right. Okay. Shemai, mum! Shemai <laughs> You're right, pal. Yeah, are you all right? Yeah, I mean, I didn't understand a word you just said. Oh, of course. Let me translate. So me and mum were just talking about our weekends and how she baked a delicious chocolate cake and I went to London. Oh, OK. Thank you so much for translating. I just didn't have a clue. Oh, yes. I remember that conversation. That was funny. But what does that have to do with that word, the inter... Interceding. Yeah. 
Okay, so you know when I was talking to my mum, mm -hmm. you couldn't really understand what we were saying. Nope. So after the conversation, I had to translate to you what we were talking about. Yeah. Well, you see, when we pray, the Holy Spirit's a little bit like that. When we trip up over our words and we get confused and sometimes we're just mumbling and groaning, he's able to translate it and understand what we're saying. So that means that even when my prayer sounds like, uh, ah, oh, the Holy Spirit still knows what I mean and what I feel inside. Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool. So how do I know if I have the Holy Spirit inside me? Ah, that's where the fruits of the Spirit come in. Fruit? Ah, I know all about fruit. I'll be back. So that fruit salad, mm -hmm. I had a banana. Oh, I did have an apple, an orange. Stop. And then I got a tomato. I know it's Stop. definitely Stop. not fruit, but... Stop. Okay, fine. We don't have to put the tomato in. I just thought it'd be quite, you know, exotic and a bit... Not this kind of fruit, silly. Oh. What kind of fruit are we talking about then? Tell you what, why don't we watch a video to explain? Okay. It's time for Paul's next big idea. The fruit of the spirit. The fruit of what? Oh, I love fruit. I'm especially partial to bananas. No, that's not the kind of fruit we're talking about. Apples? Wrong kind of fruit. Grapefruit? That's got fruit right in the name. Phil, help. Uh, let me see what I can do. Um, this is an orange. It is the fruit of an orange tree. It is what comes out of an orange tree. Like an apple is what comes out of an apple tree. I think we're following you. Though I'm still partial to bananas. I, I don't have a banana. We could wait while you go get one. I think we need to get on with the show. Paul starts out talking about the fruit that comes from our sinful nature before we follow Jesus. Paul says the fruit of our sinful nature is anger and pride and selfishness. All the things that make the world an ugly place sometimes, that make it so hard for us to get along with each other. So all the bad stuff we see, that is the fruit of our sinfulness. Okay, I get it. So what's this other fruit? Paul then talks about the fruit of the Spirit of God. When we follow Jesus and believe in the power of what he did on the cross, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And Paul says with the Spirit of God inside you, the fruit that comes out is very different. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control from Paul's letter to the Galatians. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. This is the best fruit that could possibly come out of you. Ah, oh, Tavs, I have loved learning about the Holy Spirit. It's so cool. I do still have one more question. Go on. How does the Holy Spirit get inside of us? Like, does it climb in through our belly button? No. Or does it- Steph, don't be silly. The Holy Spirit comes inside of us when we trust in Jesus when we accept that we have done wrong things and we need forgiveness and we trust in what he did on the cross when he died and rose again to cover them all up so we can be put right with God. That's amazing and that sounds really easy. Is that something that we could do today? Yeah, it's something we could do right now. Should we give it a go? Absolutely. Lord Jesus, we understand that we have done some wrong things and some bad things in our lives and we ask you for your forgiveness. We believe that you died on the cross for us and that you rose from the dead and we want to invite you into our lives and we want to receive your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you've had a really good time learning about the Holy Spirit today and that you have a great half term. Ta! Fruit salad's ready!